Okay, so I'm going to play adventure number two from the Castle Ravenloft board game. And adventure number two is called Find the Icon of Ravenloft. The big picture idea for this adventure is that there is a um, an item called the Icon of Ravenloft hidden somewhere in the dungeon. And it's in a particular room, uh, the chapel of the dungeon. So our two heroes have entered into the dungeon and they have to find their way down through the dungeon to get to the chapel so that they can retrieve the icon of Ravenloft and maybe put an end to Strahd's evil reign. So I've already gone through and done the setup. I've shuffled the tiles, I've shuffled the cards, and I've picked out my heroes. I will be playing this game alone, so I'll be controlling both heroes. And when you start the game, they want you to look over this uh, flavor text just so that you can get the right atmosphere set. And it says, A cleric in Brovia has told you about the legend of the icon of Ravenloft. He believes that the lost artifact still exists, resting in the hidden chapel deep within the castle. The chapel remains a safe haven, a place of goodness and light in all that terrible darkness, the cleric explained. If you can bring the icon to me, I can use it to defend the town from Strahd and his minions, and perhaps even find a way to destroy the vampire lord once and for all. Now you stand at the bottom of the stairs leading into the dungeon crypts. The only thing between you and your goal, endless corridors of darkness and an army of monsters. <clears throat> so I will be using these uh, turn tracker sheets that I made because I find them pretty much indispensable. And we'll go over those as we go through our turns. The only part of the setup I haven't completed is drawing a treasure item for each of our characters. So as part of the setup, you uh, have to draw a treasure item. <clears throat> or you, you can, you get to. I don't know, if you forget, I guess it's just bad news for you. So we are going to draw, and we got eagle eyes. And this is not a treasure item, so that's just going to go onto the discard pile. We draw again, and we got a short rest. Again, not an item, so it goes into the discard. Draw again, and I'm, uh, by the way, I'm drawing for Arjun, but um, the way items work, you can assign them to either player. And we got Lucky Find, not so lucky, because it's going to go to the discard. <clears throat> and we got Moments Respite, another discard. <laughs> Draw again, and alright, we got an item. So this is Lucky Charm, you get to re-roll the dice, and yeah, that can certainly come in handy. Um, and I think I will give this to Arjun because Alyssa has this ability called Careful Attack, which just allows her to automatically do one damage, whereas Arjun has to roll for his attacks, so it'll probably probably be better to give that item to Arjun. So let's go ahead and draw another item. And we got, oh, we got Lucky Charm again. So they both get to re-roll. All right, so that's going to be it for the setup. So we'll put the cards over here, and we'll get going with the adventure. I'm going to have Arjun play out his turn first, and there's not a whole lot to do at the, on the very first go because uh, there are no monsters or traps or anything like that. So the only thing you can really do is just move and explore. So that's what Arjun's going to do. He has a speed of five, which means he can move one, two, three, four, and make it all the way to the unexplored edge with, with speed to spare. So he's going to move up there to the unexplored edge, and then uh, that'll end his hero phase, and he'll begin exploring. So I like to keep track of these things just because it helps me remember, especially as, the, as we get further into the game. In the first couple turns, it's not so critical. But uh, So he moved. There's no attack, uh, no treasure to be taken on the first turn, and he will explore. <clears throat> so we'll go to our dungeon tile stack draw out a tile, and it's going to be a white triangle. <clears throat> so then we'll draw a monster off the monster deck, and it's going to be a skeleton. So I'm going to put that over here near his card so I remember, remember that it's his monster, but I'll also update that on my turn tracker sheet. Placing the skeleton onto the bone pile. Okay, so he drew, he got a white tile, got a skeleton, 
and there are no blessings or conditions currently affecting him and luckily no encounter and he will have the skeleton under his activation so if there was an encounter we would play that now but there's not so the skeleton activates and it says that if the skeleton is adjacent to a hero which it's not so we skip that and go to the next part if the skeleton is within one tile of a hero which it is it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks that hero with a charging slice so that's going to be Arjun. So normally, uh, monsters move bone pile to bone pile as long as they can. And in this case, they can because that still puts the skeleton adjacent to Arjun. Uh, if, if for some reason, if like if Arjun was over here, then instead of moving bone pile to bone pile, I would move bone pile to any adjacent point on the tile. I couldn't... This is technically adjacent, but the way the rules read, you move from one bone pile to the other bone pile. <clears throat> and if you can't be on the bone pile, then you make them adjacent on that same tile. So anyway, uh, so that is uh, Arjun there getting attacked by the skeleton. The skeleton's going to have a plus nine on its attack, so that's quite high. It's going to be pretty hard for it to miss, but let's hope the skeleton rolls good and low. And they did. They rolled a 3. 9 plus 3 is 12. And Arjun's AC is 17. So that is going to be a miss. Very fortunate for us. And also more fortunate, the skeleton doesn't do anything if it misses. So that's going to be the end of Arjun's turn. And now we're going to have Alyssa carry out her turn. And again, Alyssa has this great ability to just uh, automatically do one damage to any monster that she's adjacent to. It's called Careful Attack. So that makes her turn really easy to figure out what I want to do. So, and she has a speed of six, and she also has Scout, which means she doesn't have to be on an unexplored edge to explore a tile. So for example, um, I can have her move over here adjacent to the skeleton, use her Careful Attack to deal one damage and there's no roll required it's just one of her power or one of her abilities that she can do so she just immediately uh pings the skeleton for one damage so it goes down i'll turn it sideways this will be our experience pile and then we take the skeleton off the board and for that Alyssa will get some treasure but we do need to update our sheet before we get too far ahead of ourselves so she didn't need a healing surge obviously she moved she attacked, and she got a treasure card. So let's go ahead and take a look at the treasure that Alyssa got. And that's the garbage truck outside. It says, play this fortune immediately. You can move your speed or make an attack. Boy, I, would, I really wish this had come up later because this is a pretty nice card to have. But unfortunately, it just fizzles because we can't really use it right now. I mean, I can move her around, but it doesn't really doesn't really do us any good to do that. So we'll go ahead and have her use her scout now to explore this area over here. <clears throat> so Alyssa will now explore. So we'll grab another tile off the top of the stack and take a look and see what we get. We get a black triangle, which means unlike Arjun, she will have an encounter, and encounters are pretty much never good. The, in the best case scenario, they're written in such a way that they don't affect you. In the worst case scenario, they are really bad. So, let's draw the monster and see what kind of monster is going to be under Alyssa. Oh, a wraith. That's probably, I'm pretty sure out of all the monsters, this one's the worst. But maybe it's good to get it out of the way now. So I'll put that here and draw a wraith out of the stack of monsters and place it onto the bone pile. So I always like to keep track of things. So she got a wraith and her monster that will be under her activation will be a wraith. The difference here is this is what she drew this turn. Whereas if, you know, if this monster doesn't die, then it's going to keep going down. Like it'll, it'll continue forward. She doesn't have any blessings or conditions, but we do have the encounter and there's no way to uh, counteract the encounter right now because we don't have any experience. 
or we don't have enough, we only have two for the skeleton. So the encounter is Choking Fog. Attack each hero on the active hero's tile. Well, it's not terrible. I do wish that they had never done this miss damage. I, I really don't like that. So, uh, list is going to roll, and it's going to be a plus six. So, five plus six is 11. That does not hit Alyssa's armor class because she's at 15. But because of the silly game rule, we have to give her one damage. So, Alyssa takes first blood and goes down to seven. Now, the choking fog is going to attack Arjun. And 15, yikes. So, 15 plus six is 21 more than enough to go through his armor class, so he's going to take two damage. So Arjun's going to go from 10 to 8. Okay, so we'll discard the Choking Fog, and now the Wraith will get a chance to activate during her villain phase. So if the Wraith is within one tile of a hero, it is, it moves closest, it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks with life draining claws. So, let's see. Is there any way it can be closer to Arjun? I would prefer that. He has more hit points and a higher armor class. So, from the Wraith, it goes one, two, three. Um, it's pretty much the same, but I feel like. I feel like Alyssa's, you know, a couple of pixels closer. So, we'll go ahead and have the Wraith move Bone Pile to Bone Pile, and he is adjacent to both of them, but I think Alyssa's clearly slightly closer. So he attacks with the Life Draining Claws, which is a plus six, and hit or miss, it does damage, and that's a six. So six plus six is twelve, and we get lucky in that it misses... Um, Alyssa's armor class, so we only take the one damage instead of the full three. So that's good news. So Alyssa goes down to six. And that's going to be the end of her villain phase and the end of turn one. So we'll come back and see how we do in turn two.